Welcome again to the improved kitchen. Don't I pop in front of the green? I feel like I'm alive with this background. Got a little paint, got some tiles. Look at the, this really pops now, right? Oh, we got new knobs, huh? Everything is um, fake. This just got finished yesterday, still not done. So nothing is in the cabinets and I'm not gonna be able to find anything. Let's see how this goes, yeah? Today on Off Script with Sola, I'm gonna show you how to take nuts and turn them into your own homemade nut butter. Add a bunch of seasonings, mix-ins, totally customize it. This is where I had like so much fun. I made, I made so many flavors of nut butter. I have nut butter for like the rest of the year in the fridge. <laughs> but two of my favorites were Almond Joy nut butter and banana bread nut butter. And those are the ones I'm gonna show you today. And then I'm gonna show you how to take your homemade nut butter and make these thumbprint cookies that you can also really have a lot of fun with shove different things in the thumbprint, you know? Roll them around in different stuff. And if all this sounds good to you, be sure to like and subscribe for more Off Script with me, Nuts and Sola. What else do you want? Do you really want me to hit the lens? I like to start with whole raw nuts. I'm gonna get my almonds spread out and my walnuts spread out. We're gonna to be toasting them at 325 for like 20 minutes, maybe even 30 minutes. I like to go really low and slow because I wanna make sure the nuts are toasted all the way through. If you go at like a higher temperature, like 375, they're gonna look brown on the outside, but they're gonna to be totally pale on the inside. So I like to toast it until it's brown all the way through. That means everything's gonna be really flavorful and also the toasting kind of pulls out some of the moisture, which helps it blitz up faster for you too. I'm gonna grab my almonds out and check one and see if it's toasted all the way through. I wanna see evenly browned. Sometimes some of the skins get a little bit extra toasty, but don't worry about it, as long as it's not too toasty on the inside. Let's see how it looks. Look at that. That's gonna be deeply flavored. We're maxing out our almondiness, you know? Do you see? Yeah. I do you see? I do. <laughs> all right. While the nuts are warm, you wanna gather it into a towel and rub off some of the skins, but not all nuts easily like peel. Hazelnuts are the ones that like immediately everything will rub off, but almonds are kind of stubborn. So don't worry too much about trying to get all of the skin off, just get whatever you can. You just wanna get like at least half. If you get half of it, that's pretty good. The nuts like walnuts or pecans that have like a lot of nooks and crannies, I don't even try to rub off those skins because you just end up breaking the nuts. Um, that Which reminds me, let's grab our walnuts. Super toasty, roasty toasty. I feel good about the level I've skinned these nuts. Not very much at all, but you know I tried. The really loose ones came off and those are the ones that can get really gritty. You can, you know, put as much effort into rubbing off the skins as you'd like. I think that this is, this is it for me. The best part about making nut butter, besides the fact that you get like the fresh, roastiest, toastiest flavor, is that you can flavor it up however you want. So for the Almond Joy nut butter, we're going to toast some coconut that's gonna get stirred in at the end. And it's really nice because it adds a nice little crunch. We're gonna get coconut flavor in there by adding virgin coconut oil. This is really just more of a textural thing, but I really like it in there. And then you could really go for it and also add toasted, extra toasted nuts, fold it into the nut butter, like, like an Almond Joy, or is that too far? We're going in. So now let's make some nut butter, yeah? Shall we? This is my food processor. It's a robot coop. It's a commercial one that we used at our restaurant and it's very powerful. Like it can blitz anything, you can make your own flour, but you can make nut butter in any food processor. It's just gonna be, uh, depending on the strength of your food processor, the time can really vary. So. When you're following a nut butter recipe, make sure you follow visual cues rather than time because not only does it vary depending on, on your food processor, but it varies depending on the nut. Almonds, I noticed, took like 30 minutes, like 20 to 30 minutes. Almonds took a really long time, even in this fancy guy. But stuff like pecans and um, cashews, they, they're much higher in fat 
and kind of like almost a more tender nut and they blitz up like in five minutes. So just follow visual cues. You're gonna have to stop and scrape, not, not on the level of pound cake scraping. You want a fluffy pound cake? You want a tender crumb? You gotta scrape. Can I say that on this show? <laughs> not that excessively, but you gotta stop. You gotta scrape down the sides, make, so that'll help um, blend the nut butter really evenly. And now is the time to add dry stuff. Now is the time to add spices. The nut butter is gonna heat up quite a bit, so if you add your spices in there raw, they will toast up from that heat, like they'll bloom in the oils. I like adding uh, freeze-dried fruit. I'm gonna add freeze-dried bananas to my banana bread walnut butter, and it's gonna blitz up super fine, and not only does it add like concentrated fruit flavor, but it also thickens up the nut butter a little bit by absorbing some of those excess oils. You don't wanna add any liquid additions, like you don't wanna add any flavorful oils like hazelnut oil or coconut oil or sesame oil until the end. If you add oil or sugar or um, extract in the beginning when you're blitzing up your nuts, it kind of reduces the friction between the nuts and it'll never get smooth. So let's start. I'm gonna start by blitzing up my almonds and we blend. So at this stage, all the nuts are broken up and it's like almost like an almond flour, but we're gonna keep going. I think it's good to take a look at like the different stages because it's fun. The nuts change as, the, as they break down and their oils are released and I think that's cool. No? Do you think that's cool? Yeah, really cool. <laughs> you just have to keep going. It's gonna get there. You have to believe. You believe it will butter. It's all come together into a paste, but the oil hasn't fully broken out yet. So we're gonna keep processing and it will continue to get smoother. It will be like the kind of nut butter you get from the store. Let's see, it's so smooth. Smooth, creamy. And see how dark that color is? That means it's gonna be very flavorful because we took the time to get a really, really, really thorough toast. This nut butter is actually warm from the friction. So we're gonna make it Almond Joy by adding some milk chocolate chips. You don't have to melt them first, they're just gonna melt in there as you blitz it up. A little bit of coconut oil. Um, I'm using virgin coconut oil because I really want it to give it a lot of coconutty flavor, but I also found that finishing any nut butter with a saturated fat like coconut oil or brown butter kind of helped the texture. It made it a little bit creamier once it's set up. And some salt and vanilla. And then we're gonna stir in our coconut chips. And then, and then that's it. It's almond joy. So I waited until the end to add the fats because I wanted to make sure that the nut butter got as smooth as possible. And now we're just gonna blitz this up. the vanilla. Oh. Um, I have vanilla paste here, but you can use extract. I just ran out of my extract. Whenever you're using vanilla paste, use half as much because it's more vanilla-y. It's totally smooth. Everything's mixed in. And now I'm just gonna stir in the toasted coconut. I really like this flavor. It actually tastes like Almond Joy. I think milk chocolate's key. I mean, if you wanna be fancy, use dark, but I feel like the milk chocolate gives you that candy bar vibe. So I'm just stirring it up in here. The coconut is also a good addition because it will absorb the excess oils in the, in the um, nut butter and help it thicken it up. Now my Almond Joy butter is ready. It looks pretty thin, but don't worry. It's because it's warm right now, it'll totally thicken up. You can keep this at room temperature if you want it to be softer. I really like this one cold because it kind of scoops like a truffle. It's pretty, it's pretty tasty. I think it's because of the milk chocolate. But I did, I tried it with cocoa. I tried making my own like nutella -y vibe. You can use cocoa, you can use dark chocolate. Sweeten it with whatever kind of sugar you want. Add like toasted sesame oil. Oh, go, get crazy, you can, I don't know. I thought this was a lot of fun. Just recreate, think of a flavor or dessert or place you wanna go and turn it into nut butter, huh? Right? So I think this is best consumed in like a week. Just like I said, it's, it's a lot like spices 
and the nuts, nut oils are gonna taste their best if you have it, you know, within a week, I'd say. You can keep it in the fridge and extend that shelf life a few more weeks, but I think the best part about making your own is really to enjoy the freshness. So I don't think you should make a bigger batch than this and, and just like, you know, put it on everything for a week. It will be fun. These are the nut butters we just made. This is the Almond Joy. Here we've got our banana bread. And then here are some other flavors I played around with earlier. So this is my homemade Nutella. I just blitzed in some dark chocolate instead of milk and left out the coconut. This one is really good. Okay, so this is cashew chai. So when I blended up the cashews in the beginning, I added a whole bunch of black tea and spices and then finished it with coconut sugar. It's really good. You can really taste the tea. And then this is my power butter. So <laughs> it's just an almond butter that I added a whole bunch of seeds. So I added chia, flax, sesame, um, pepitas, and the seeds kind of absorbed the oil and made this really nice and thick. So depending on what you add to the nut butters, the texture comes out different. When you make your own nut butter, you can customize and that's a really fun part. But you can also make a really pure product that you can bake with. So I'm gonna show you once you've got your custom nut butter out of whatever nut you want, I'm gonna show you a recipe for a thumbprint cookie that you can make with any natural nut butter. And you can really play around with it, fill it with different stuff, roll it in different stuff, and use whatever nut butter you want. Was that a good transition? I love peanut butter blossoms, so I wanted to like, I was thinking about all the ways you could level up your peanut butter blossoms. So this, you can do with any nut butter. It has to be uh, an unsweetened nut butter, like a totally natural one. If you use something like Skippy, it won't bake right because the proportions will be off. And um, each nut butter has a little bit different amount of fat. So sometimes your dough might be a little bit softer, a little bit stiffer, but it'll still bake up just fine. So I think you can have a lot of fun here Use pistachio butter or tahini or what are other nuts? Pine. Pine nut butter? Get crazy. And you can have like a lot of fun playing around with the stuff you put inside. Jam, sure. Hershey's Kiss, totally. But we're gonna stick a Ferrero Rocher inside, huh? Fun sized candy bars. Maybe like a tiny, tiny like Snickers pressed right into it. And you can have like so much fun with these roll them in different stuff. We're gonna do oats and cocoa, but you can also do any kind of like seed, maybe some like sugar or freeze dried fruit, Ooh, wheat germ. You can have so much fun with this and it all comes together in one bowl. So I'm gonna show you one dough that I'm making with, wait, I don't know what kind of butter this is. I think this is hazelnut butter. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you one dough with hazelnut butter, but feel free to swap out the nut butter for whatever you want get crazy here. Okay, so we're gonna start by whisking together our sugar, butter, and salt. Oh, and a little bit of baking soda. The baking soda is not gonna help us with leavening here, it's just gonna help us with browning. This is kind of like a dense, chewy, crumbly kind of cookie, like shortbread vibes, you know? Brown sugar, and here I've got my kosher salt and baking soda. This is a really simple cookie dough. You're not creaming, you're doing it all in one bowl, but you do wanna take your time and mix the ingredients in this order to make sure that we're adding our flour right at the end and it doesn't get too tough. Everything else has a chance to come together without it. All right, so now I'm going in with one egg yolk and a little bit of vanilla. Ooh. Now make sure at this point, like really thoroughly mix. The egg yolk's gonna kind of help emulsify the cookie dough. This is gonna be kind of a greasy dough from the fat from the nut butter, but the egg yolk keeps it from being like super, super greasy. I tried it without egg and it just kind of, it just, it was just turned into nut butter back into your fingers. So the egg really helps bring it all together. You can see as soon as I added the egg, this mixture got nice and creamy. It was looking a little oily before, but now it's like emulsified. Now we switch to our spatula. All right, so now I'm gonna mix in my hazelnut butter. So now I'm gonna add my flour and we're gonna just mix this until it com it's combined. I tried this with a gluten-free flour blend and it works, but you must eat it the same day. The gluten-free cookies, they got, they got real soft on day two, but you can always roll these into balls and then freeze them and then bake them from frozen. Now our dough 
is nicely mixed, all the flour is incorporated. Super important, when you're working with the stove, make sure you keep it covered because it very quickly will dry out. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Now is the fun part. We're gonna form these into balls. I like using a cookie scoop just so it's a little bit faster, but you can use a couple of tablespoons or just, you know, eyeball it with your hands. We're gonna roll it in different things. Because this dough dries out very quickly, you have to roll and then go right into your topping. You can't roll out all the balls and then try and top it. It'll get dry and it won't stick very well. Now is the time you get to play with your cookie dough. All right, I love using these because it makes it super easy. You just roll it in your hands and then roll it in whatever the hell you want. I really like the oats because the oats with the nuts kind of taste like streusel. And these don't spread too much, so you just need to put like an inch between each one. Let's try some coconut, a little cocoa, freeze-dried raspberries. Should we go coconut and then cocoa? Yeah. Whoa, ready? Let go. Whoa, guys, see? See how much fun we're having? We're going in the oven. Oh, there's a little bit of nut butter inside of my mask. <laughs> so our cookies have baked. Ooh. Our cookies have baked for about nine minutes and you can see they've kind of spread just a touch. They're a little bit set. Now's the time to put our thumbprint and add our filling. I like to use a half teaspoon measure to like squish in there, but you can use your thumb. You could use the back of a wooden spoon. Get crazy. I like to smush it after it's baked for a little bit because I found that the shape comes out a little bit neater, but if you like that long cooked jam flavor, then you can smush it first thing and then bake it with the jam on top and then it kind of cooks down and it kind of gets like sticky and a little bit like caramelized. Since we're adding it a little bit later and it's only gonna bake for four minutes after this, it's gonna stay a little bit saucy, but I'm into that. So just do whatever you want. You can choose your own adventure here. Oh, but if you're adding chocolate, the best thing is to add it at this point. I'm using some Ferrero Rochers. So for this, I'm not making a thumbprint. I'm just pushing the chocolate right in there. Boom. And it's gonna warm up in the oven and kind of become one. But you can also do like, I think it's really pretty to take like a big bar like this and shove it in there. The classic kiss is always good too, you know? So it stays soft for a bit. You have, your t you have some time to, you know, have fun there. Okay, so let's fill some of these up. So I like the oat one with some blueberry jam. I think it tastes like blueberry pie. Like a heaping quarter teaspoon, you don't need much. And then here in these, um, the raspberry one, I'm gonna add a little bit of cherry jam. What's great about this cookie dough is you just make one dough and you can have like a whole cookie plate. That's gonna look really, you know, dynamic and different, but it wasn't that much work at all. So I have a little bit of orange marmalade I'm gonna put in our coconut thumbprints. Um, if you can find lemon curd from the grocery store, that's also really good in here. Yeah, get, get crazy, guys. These are gonna go back in the oven for four minutes. The cookie's gonna still feel a little bit soft when it comes out of the oven, but don't worry, because they crisp up as they cool. Here we go. One dough, any kind of nut butter, and then get crazy, get creative, have fun. This looks like such a like fun, dynamic, diverse group of cookies, but one dough. If I could find my flaky salt, I would finish the chocolate ones with a little, just a little hit of it. Since it's kind of melted slightly, it'll stick and give us a little bit of contrast. So, for a Rocher, I'm gonna give this a shot. This is, this is serious, this is intense. This is like a lot of candy on top of a, a, a lot of cookie. <laughs> hmm? Hmm? This is really intense. You get your cookie and your candy at once. I feel like one of these, and I'm like, good, this is a dessert. The crust gives you like tart shell vibes, you know? It's like a ganache tart in a cookie. So this is the raspberry 
cookie with the um, strawberry jam. Classic peanut butter jelly. So this is the one that's rolled in coconut and it has a little marmalade. Delightful. My favorite is these um, the pecan oat blueberry because it tastes like blueberry pie, which is my favorite kind of pie. Mm -hmm. I feel like the nut flavor really comes through. It's a little bit crumbly like a shortbread, but it has a little bit of a chew right in the center. Um, and I feel like that's also from the moisture of the jam pulling in there. But yeah, I think they're super tasty. You can have a lot of fun. I don't know, I like it. It's good. Show me your thumbprints, guys. So now that you know how to make your own nut butter, go off script, get crazy, try different mix-ins, try it with any nut, try different seasonings, and try out this simple thumbprint cookie recipe. You can find both of these recipes on Food52, and if you like what you saw today, make sure to like and subscribe for more Off Script with Sola. His lack of sweetness is why this is so difficult. <laughs> Hi Clem. She's the only reason why people watch this. <laughs>